What is poppin', everyone? What's poppin'? How you niggas doing? Niggas is doing good. The weather's actually cooperating for fucking once. The weather is nice today. It Yesterday was, was kind of cold. Like, it's every other day. It's it cold, warm, day. cold, warm, cold, 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 I rain, warm. Anymore. Yeah. Like, I need it to be one weather, because if not, people end up getting sick. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ee, ee, ee. Well, I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, but it's, but it's close to March, so, you know, when, when spring comes, weather does get better. Okay. So I think it's the groundhog really that was fast. supposed to come out ended up dying. So I think spring got dying. pushed back. I, yeah, the groundhog died. It died. It I, died. I feel like they would announce if they died. It, they did announce it. Oh. Yeah. All right. I think so spring's pushed back a little bit further because it died. I, I think white people just be lying to us and just be telling us whenever they feel like spring is starting, spring's starting. It's the groundhog that tells us. Do you really believe that? I believe what the animal says. I trust animals. <laughs> they ain't never lied to me not once. <laughs> they ain't never talked to you once either. <laughs> How you know? How you know? You know. I could be Pocahontas. Is it Girl, Pocahontas? Who talks to animals? I think it's Pocahontas. No, she don't. Who? She don't talk to animals. Is it Sleeping Beauty? Sleeping Beauty? Which, which one is Disney Mistress? Which, which one? Uh, I think it's Sleeping Beauty. The one, I sing, the, one that, the one that sings with Cinderella. Cinderella. She Cinderella. Talking about, yeah, her. Yeah. I just feel like if you were a Disney princess, you have somebody, everyone talks to a fucking animal. Right. So you have some point, kind of magic power. It probably power. was Cinderella. It probably was Sleeping Beauty. And it probably was Moana. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll take it there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you have that. <laughs> I watched enough of them. Do you have a story time? I, girl, yes. So let me tell you my motherfucking story time. Okay. So, you know, last week we did a podcast with the certified steppers. Shout out to them. Y'all are some cool ass, well, cool ass nigga. We never met the other guy. So, <laughs> cool ass nigga. And, you know, we went to crew afterwards. You know, we, we had, hung out, had a good little time. And then uh, somehow, somehow, somewhere, I lost my keys. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought I lost my keys. Facts. You know, we retraced the steps. We came back to the crew twice. I had this nigga tear his car up and down. We called his friend. Hey, make sure you don't have my keys. I called him again. Hey, pat yourself down. Check your car. Make sure you don't have my keys. Uh, uh. So apparently, I'm really thinking I lost my keys. I'm yeah. like about to have a mental breakdown because I was like, how the fuck? Did I lose my keys? I've never lost my keys in my life. People don't lose their age, keys. Ever. You don't lose your keys. That's important. So, um, you know, I had I had a new lock, uh, a new key chain, new, a new key made. I had to change my locks because I thought my mom had my spare key. She lost my fucking spare key. So, mom, that was useless. <laughs> no, mom, that was useless. Um, and then he calls me two days later. He's like, man, you going to be mad at me. I said, what? He said, I got your keys. <laughs> I was like, bitch ass nigga, like, what? You had my keys the whole entire time? He was like, I didn't even know I had it. I just found it in my car. And I'm like, I told you to check. How did, only- how, how did it get in his car from his pocket? That means he had to physically say, because you didn't you didn't get a ride from him. You got a friend ride from um, his friend, his cousin, his cousin, his yeah. cousin. So he had to take him out of his keys. And he was like, I'm going to just sit on this for a second. You know what? And I'm going to text her <laughs> and try to get her to come over here. Because one thing about niggas, they're going to try to spend more time with you. Right. You know what? I'm not going to say he tried to, He took my keys on purpose. But <laughs> you know what? It, it, I won't say it's an accident, but it was just the lack of searching. You know, niggas don't look at us. Just look for yeah. shit. Right. And he could have stopped his car, got out, checked his keys. You know, if someone tells you, they, they lost their keys and keys are expensive especially if you have a push to start keys are just that's your whole life when you lose your car keys and your house keys your that's life literally is, everything it's like losing your social security card it's everything you know I, I kind of paid so much money to like have everything replaced and then just for you to call me two days later like you have my keys this whole time <laughs> and then not even give me half the money back that's the worst part so yeah shout out to certified steppers but i'm not fucking with your cousin though because i don't like that i don't like him i don't like that i don't like that at all you got a story time for us no i don't have a story time i told you that one's going i'm gonna keep that one in the vault okay it's too it's too soon it's too soon too soon all right so if you haven't already check out the girls on youtube youtube patreon tiktoks real Sip and review. review. We, we send, send a shit, shit and review. review. We have our merch coming up. Finally, TJ, Finally, li- Finally. send me all the fucking pictures so we can put out our merch. And he made me look like a fucking when I goddess. Talk, no, he did a, I think he did a great job with all the pictures because yeah. of, of the amount of time that it took us to do it and his turnaround. I was like, no, his turnaround is kind of lagging. I'm not gonna lie. It? Yeah, because I, I have to keep. I have to keep asking. Oh, that's awkward. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. And I was like, he's put all, never mind. Ah! Let me not even go there. It's not in my business. You put your business out there. <laughs> so if you, uh, the girls are back at it again with another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill where we create conversations. Oh, wow. Sipping wine. I go by the motherfucking Sammy. And I'm ambitious Cruella DeVille Ture. 
All right. If you haven't already, check us out on all social networks at the Rose of Spill, except Twitter. Which is Sip and Spill 1. And while you're at it, give us a five star rating because we're some five star bitches. Ow. So, so today, today, we have a so very special so I'm so excited, y'all, because I'm a woman's woman, and I love women, and I will love more women on this motherfucking show. And she is the first woman of this season to come on our show. And even last season, we didn't have that many women. Because season one, I don't think we had any women. Season two, I think we had like probably three, three, or, four, three or four, yeah, give or take, compared to how many other fucking niggas. Yeah. And then... We're it's like, just so much easier to get guys on the show like guys you can ask they'll be there immediately women you ask is always like oh i got this to do yeah oh, I forgot. and then you know it's even it's like even worse like it's like almost damn near the end of our season and this is the first one that we have you know what it is what it is you know what for last, baby. Okay. i love that for us and for you so can you introduce yourself tell them where they can find you my uh, name is adriana cool and i am from the recovering party girls and we are Recovering Party Girls Pod on Twitter, the Recovering Party Girls on Instagram, and we're not on Facebook, but yeah, that uh, I don't know, TikToks is a little outside Should of my scope. Back us so, too, us too. Us too. We I'm just trying, started. I'm I'm trying to get into it. Ebony's trying to get into it, but it's just not our lane. And it's so. hard. We're grown. We are. <laughs> It's, it's, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's, it's uh, outside of my age range. So, <laughs> age range, I want to ask you off camera how old you are because when you just said that, I'll be feeling I'm like 37. That. Okay. Oh my God. You look great. No, you're not. 37. I'll be 38 in September. I don't oh believe that. Oh my God. Yeah. You yes, look like you are. Now I know why y'all are now y'all recovering. Because uh, I'm still in the I'm still in the party stage. I'm trying to get out of that I life. Don't know. It's but, okay. It's it's it's, it's phase. You got to just phase yourself out. Oh my god. Right. So okay. okay. So how did y'all think of the name? How did y'all start? I'm like really interested because I'm like wait. I'm, little side note. First, I've been following them for a while now. I'm, I'm actually a huge fan. Um, I've loved their podcast for a while. I just don't understand how y'all be doing two hour episodes sometimes <laughs> because we drink. That's what it is. I'm you and. And um, a man in Sills are definitely the two first black women podcasts I listened to. And I just immediately fell in love with it. Um, one of the reasons why I started podcasting, I looked at y'all, I was like, these girls are doing a damn thing. You know, I reached out to you, asked you some questions like, you yeah. know, how do you record? What, what, so yeah. y'all, and I, oh, you are so kind. You answered all my questions. Like you helped <laughs> us out. So I greatly appreciate oh, that. It's all good. I mean, I don't like blessings. Cause I want the blessing. Right. And you know, I just feel like it's just important Especially for us, like, yeah. to share information yeah. because there's so, I mean, what y'all talk about, what we talk about, everybody can get something from. Right. So it's not like a, uh, like a that. one lane type thing. Mm -hmm. where, and and we're black women lane. doing a damn thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's dope. So, no, who am I to block your blessing? Yeah. Let me share my knowledge with you guys. If, you know, and two years I later, can, you're here. You know, and, and not boom, even that, y'all. Off camera, I told her I loved her. So on camera, I'm going to tell you, like, I'm fucking obsessed with you. Okay, like, yay. Fucking all obsessed. right. <laughs> <laughs> like, bitch, you're my soulmate. Like, today was on Ami. Um, yeah, one thing about Ami, she will take you. <laughs> she will take you. She will, like, we're going to be friends. Okay. You have no choice. Well, sweetie, here, we'll exchange well, numbers. We'll, we'll get... <laughs> so, like I was saying, how did y'all start? How did it begin? What, like, I want to know. Well, so it started with my DUI. I got a DUI okay. in 2014. And um, I was going through the process. I was so just just upset with myself and, you know, going through that. I don't know if you guys have ever had a DUI. Never. But um, I'm not a jail person. So all. That, all that, life, for that lifestyle is just not for me. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just like, what the fuck? Like, what am I doing? So um, that was just a very hard time for me. I was going through a bad breakup and... Um, so Ebony used to come in, and I was at, I was working at D Bar, and Ebony used to come into D Bar. So you know we would laugh and drink and blah blah blah. And then um, I went through all my court process, and then I got off probation. Literally the day my probation ended, Ebony comes in. I mean tears, sobbing crying and i'm like what is wrong she's like i just got arrested for a dui so i was oh like my. what yeah <laughs> and this Deja is after vu. and this is literally and when you after were done with yours. i was talking to her through my about my process because she would try to come to the bar and you know buy me shots i'm like bro i'm on probation like my probation officer is something serious mm -hmm. so um 
you know, I'm just like look, looking at her like, girl, you didn't learn nothing from me. No, right. people, people so, need to go through some shit just so they can go through so, it. So, you know, I think that it was uh, it was it was a blessing in disguise because I was able to kind of give Coach her what was going to happen. And, you know, this is this X, Y and Z because it's all standard. So um, we I, I kind of coached her through that. And then. One day she was needing help on her blog. She was, and Ebony is actually a really, really great writer. Like people wouldn't know that about her, but her, the way she writes is really funny. And she had this blog at the time and she needed help with her website. So I helped her and uh, we were just talking. And at the time I really didn't know what a podcast was. Yeah. I had no idea. And I, she was talking and she was showing me like these YouTube videos and she was just like, do you want to start a podcast? And of course I'm like sipping on my coffee. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. What the fuck is a podcast? Right. <laughs> so she told me the idea and I was like, okay, we were going to name it. I forgot the name we were going to name it. We were going to name it something else. But then um, she hit me up and she was just like, you know what? We're recovering party girls, like yeah, and that is so suitable. Like yeah. it's so catchy. It's, yeah, it's like party we girls. Were, I was still in. I was still in the industry, but I was trying to kind of make my way out of it because mm -hmm. I was working at the health department at the time, and so I was trying to phase my way out of bartending. And um, it's so hard. It it's is so hard. hard it's the money absolutely very hard. Um, so we just kind of went with that name and it stuck and then we decided that everybody i mean real in reality everybody's recovering from something That's and true. um mm -hmm. there is like relationships friendships mom relationships dad relationships siblings like there's so many things that people are recovering from yes. at different points in their life yes. that it, it at that point where we were at we were recovering from being party, party girls. girls yeah and so that was kind of just like, OK, that's that's what we're going to roll with. So okay. our first photo shoot was actually in my office at the health department. That's hilarious. <laughs> Why not use a space? I literally blocked off my my little space and I mean, Curl and I are smoking. And hey, you got to start from like, somewhere. Literally, literally. We did our first photo shoot at my old apartment. Like, yeah. Yeah, you just we got did. to start from somewhere. We did. And put out like a screen up. It was like, yeah. Do this. Yeah, I had to leave a clean the, the cleaning lady a note that says, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we had like, a, it was it was a mess. I left the spot a mess. But um, but yeah, that's essentially how we got started. Okay, five years later. And and five years later, here we are. I love that for y'all. Okay. So you want to get into our icebreaker? Yeah, let's get into our icebreaker. Okay. So it's called word association. We're gonna okay. say a word. You can sing or rap a word that has to do with the word. That's do with the word that we get, give you. Okay. So let's credit that we got it from L Magazine because once we get big, we are not plagiarist. Is that the word plagiarist? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it's what, plagiarizing. What is it when you steal something? Plagiarizing, right? Uh, plagiarizing okay. is more maybe writing. Yeah. Well, we ain't still. I don't know. We credited him. Yeah, we're crediting. It's credit. Yeah. All right. Our first word is woman. Okay. You say I could sing, sing it? or rap. A yeah. Song. Do not mouth it like it's like, you know, people always try to do it like they are doing poetry. No, we want you to either sing or rap. That was one person. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm not good with this. I'm sorry. Like, There's I so want to. songs with woman. Oh, like I could sing a song that's associated with that, yeah. that one that has that, the word. Yeah. I am woman. Ooh. I don't know this song. That's um I don't know what song that is. That's I from am woman. woman. I am so I'm not on Instagram so much. Okay, yeah. No, 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 no. That's oh, from one, No. That's <laughs> no. <laughs> A different woman song? No. Um, so that's from uh the movie My Best Friend's Wedding, where the guys they're doing karaoke in the scene and the guy's like singing he goes, I am woman. But it was a guy. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Our next word is independent. All the ladies who independent. Oh, throw your hands, hands up, up in there. There. You better have gone there. I was really gonna say I N D E P E N D E N T. Okay, that that's that would be my next thought. But that that's was the it. First. Okay, and the last word is ass. Ass, 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 ass. That's all I was gonna say. Ass, ass, ass. Don't stop. 
All right, so let's get into some wine facts so we can get into some tea time. Tea time. A little background story about this wine. This was gifted to us by the lovely certified Steppa. Um, what a what a well, that's a black king right there. No, he really is. He's like, a black king. We're gonna give you your flowers while you're here, my nigga, because mm-hmm. you are a man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this called this is Fortune Hands. It is a hot trot, hot to trot smooth red blend. It has aromas of red fruit with smooth flavors of cherry and black raspberry. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's going to have 13.5 alcohol content. Not the highest, but not yeah, the lowest no, either. I mean, we already drank this, so I already know what it tastes like, but I'm going to act surprised for y'all guys. <laughs> we did enjoy it the first time, so I'm definitely sure I'm going to enjoy it the second time. Did we enjoy it? We didn't mix any tequila or anything with it? No, we just drank oh, it. Oh, mix tequila with Sometimes wine? we got yeah, to. Oh, yeah. Uh, it calls for, for real sometimes. deal. When we get that yeah. communion wine. Yeah, the communion be, wine yeah. be communion. Cheers to another mess of episode. Sip and spill. Cheers. Clink, clink. It's actually a lot sweeter than I remember. I don't think it's sweet at all. What? Like, what is this? A blend? It's a red yeah, blend. It's definitely a blend. Mm-hmm. I can tell it's a blend. It's definitely tasty. Do you think it's sweet? I don't think it's sweet. Mm-hmm. I think it has. F- a, I am, thought it was a cab. Am I yeah. alcoholic? It's maybe. It's not sweet. It's not. It's not super dry it's not, either. It's not dry, but it's not, not sweet. sweet. I yeah. like the like fine balance of like, but I don't know if this is the fine balance. I think it should be a little bit more drier. I like it. I think it's just the right amount of drink. I love that for y'all. Sweet. I'm still going to drink it, though, because I don't let no wine go undrank, Thanks. okay? You cannot. All right, so let's get some of the fucking tea time. Uh, Tasha K. Yeah, Tasha K. I'm not really familiar with her besides the fact that Cardi B sued the fuck out of her and yeah. she owes Cardi B $3 million. But she says she ain't got the $3 million that she owes Cardi. Bitch, I ain't got $3 million. And I feel like, why were you? Why are you talking shit? Like, you cannot, your mouth couldn't cash the check it was talking. Okay, so we're going to give the backstory because I'm going to say, because you just said you're not familiar. Okay, so everyone that isn't familiar, um, Tasha K, she was a girl who was making, I think, it was YouTube videos. She's a videos. blogger too. Yeah, she's making YouTube videos about Cardi B talking about how she has herpes, STDs, ah, 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 da, da, da. And Cardi B was like, bitch, you don't know me. And then she sued her. Yeah. So now that bitch owe her money. And she said it was from defl- deflammation of character. Of character. I hope I said that right, y'all. Yeah. I'll be saying shit just because these shit. gossip magazines and these gossip you know, blogs have no problem making up these false, false narratives of people. And it's like, these destroy people's lives. Exactly. Like all these lies and the way people view Cardi is probably directly linked it's to what very, she was saying. It's fabricated by what they think is perception. Right. And, also, and people I don't just, fact check. They just hear one thing and they, and they go, with, go it. Away with it. Yeah. And my thing is, I feel like people don't understand celebrities are human as well. So that's why I always say like, if me and you were, or when we do get to where we need to be, yeah. And to our podcast realm. And, you know, I say, I sometimes say offensive shit. Don't try to come for me for the shit that I say because I'm human and I'm a clap right fucking back. Don't think because I'm supposed to be on this pedestal. I'm supposed to be above that shit. No, I'm going to still give you 2012 army and talk that shit. Yeah. Okay? So I, I just know. feel like we should just be mindful of what we put out there, and what we say about people, because it, you never know what you people are going through know. and how it affects them. Facts. So it's just like, just don't make up lies. I understand there's a market for this. There's TMZ, there's Facts. Ball Alert, there's the Shade Room. The Shade Room. So it's yeah, there's a market of it. But it's just like, when, what is too far? There should be a fine line of not, you know. They should be able to have to do more fact checking before they're able to release stuff like that. Just like, you know, with the yeah. news, even though sometimes the news be lying. I think that you, we need to hold bloggers and more accountable. Yeah. Cause it, even if it's opinion based, your opinion does not mean it's fact. So definitely not with that. So there was a viral TikTok video. Long story short, it was the TikTok entanglement. This woman met a guy while she was in Miami and she said she was following a TikTok trend that said, help me find him. So she posted the video that she took of him when they were in Miami and it came up that they found him and he was very much married right. for years with four kids. Right. And he, he didn't even know it was out. His wife knew it was out. Okay. So the reason why we're talking about this is because the woman said she didn't know he was married. He got her number. Uh, uh, uh. And like when me and Sam were talking about this earlier, I was like, it's giving very much Derek Jackson because yes. he was really gaslighting yeah. the entire yeah. situation. Absolutely. It's just her sitting next to him looking dumb. You know, yeah. she's telling the story looking dumb. Yeah. As, looking, looking, dumb looking dumber. As, yeah. yeah. You're she, sitting on there trying to explain 
why you stay why with you him. Why you stay with him. Right. Sis. Without, a, without the bond of salvation, like there was nothing to protect you from all the lies you were telling yourself. Like, she, I bet you this bitch did not say you can have him. She was like, oh yeah, when I reached out to the girl, she said that we never, they never had sex. And she's like, is that your man? She's like, not anymore. Girl, girl you was married for six years. You fighting for that family. And you have kids with him? Four. He's fighting for the, four. Oh, and they just shit, had no. a baby recently too. Oh, so There was a fresh fighting. ass baby. And it's like, you, you allowed your man to go on vacation, right? You mm-hmm. trusted him to go on vacation with his boys. And this is how he repays you by trying to grab other bitches in the pool mm-hmm. on, on the beach. Like, it's just, it's, it's just embarrassing. And it's like, it was innocent. There's nothing innocent about that. Finding they bitches in Miami, like this. Yeah, there's nothing innocent about finding bitches in Miami. We all know what people go to Miami to do. Hello, we um, all know what what Miami is about. And they always say, "Don't bring no sand to the motherfucking beach." And okay, nigga, he sure the fuck didn't. But exactly. he brought his dick. Exactly, he went there to Shirt find off. <laughs> Fresh Start, look, right. he did some push-ups in the right. hotel, looking sexy as hell. <laughs> didn't we say we said you never trust a nigga with a beard and bald head ever? Bald head and beard, the two B's. Ever. And he probably got big balls too. Shit. So if it was you in that position, would you have stayed with him or would you just take your L quietly? I probably I would take that L quietly and I would I wouldn't have to why would I address it with fucking the shade room? Why do I need to tell y'all why I'm staying with my man? Yeah. All places. The shade room. Shade room. Yeah. T S F what was it? CRS Justin, you calling me? What? I would have hung up that phone so fucking fast. Let me look dumb and, and, and private. It was definitely, yeah. No, if I'm going to stay with my would, nigga, I'm yeah. not going to tell the world I'm staying with him. I'm just going to push through. I, don't, I, I wouldn't even, no. I would, no. I'm going to say, and I wouldn't even reach out to that bitch. Because the thing is with me, I always feel like what women don't understand. Most times it's the men that's the problem. And, not you, the know, and you know your man. Yeah, she you knows know her man. man. That's why she was saying that's you yours know, now. You know your man. This ain't and the first time he went to Miami. And it's not going to be the last. Last. That nigga, that nigga looks like a cheater. Bitch. His mannerisms. The whole time when she was talking, the way he would roll, he was his smiling, eyes and smiling. Yeah, oh, he's done this before. He, he has no shame in his again. game. He will do it again. He, he probably did it yesterday. <laughs> Bitch, he did it right when they got done with the interview. Like, right. hey, I'm about to go out the boys, get a lot some steam. So yeah, no, men are horrible people. We already say that. We are we, are we trusting our guys to go on vacation without us? The thing is, I don't. The thing is, I don't try to. Um, put myself in a space of thinking of shit like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, if it comes to my front door like her, granted, I'm not going to handle it like she did, like yeah. Miss Mamas. But um, I don't ever try to think of a worst case scenario. Because when you think yeah. of first, what, first, worst case scenario, you're speaking that reality into your life. Absolutely. Even, like manifesting it without even saying it. Absolutely. Like, no, absolutely not. I, I live by the, 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 the philosophy of you, everybody has a choice. You can always do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can do exactly. I, I've, I've told my boyfriends this. You can absolutely do what you, you want to do. Said that with the S, huh? You said that with the S. She's had more than one boyfriend in her life, baby. Uh, and is yes, she? I have I'm just saying, your boyfriend. How many you got right now? I mean, that's neither here nor there. But I, I live by the motto of you can do exactly what you want to do, but there will always be consequences mm-hmm. with the whatever choice you make. That's cool. I'm not finna police you. I'm not finna like stop, like look through your phone. I don't need to do all that. But I know my God, and I know how my God works. My God. And He ain't for the let no man God play me. From heaven to earth. <laughs> he ain't finna let no man play me. Okay. Now, he is. may he can he he may maneuver and finesse one time. Two time, whatever. But when I find out, oh yes, baby, baby, and they be on their knees crying, boo hoo, it's not down on those. Ooh, hey, baby, don't leave me. You can do whatever you want to. But when but, I find out, baby, but, just they keep the, cool. keep that same energy. Keep the same keep energy. When I find out. Keep it. They never want to keep the same energy no. when you find out. They want to cry. They want to cry on their they knees. Tell you they want to get their life to God. <laughs> right. I ain't never had a nigga tell me to get his life to God. I guess I ain't doing shit right. No, <laughs> no girl, they no. started saying that he's about to God. You want me to change, man? He ain't gonna do I'm shit like this no over. over. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when bitches go through a heartbreak. Oh, I'm I'm focusing on me. I'm I'm not gonna have sex for this long. Yeah, but you know, know what? what? Haircut. Hey, <laughs> di- listen. That shit is real though. That is, it feels so euphoric. It but I'm just wearing though. weave, y'all. I, but I did go to a heartbreak. But I just decided to I, you know, get a weave. In 2014, when I got my DUI, uh, I cut my hair. I was, yeah. I, I was going through it. I, I heartbreak. Hotel. Was it like I'm gonna say? I was like, was it like okay, heartbreak hotel? Not not Britney Spears going through it. No, 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 no. It wasn't Britney. <laughs> it wasn't like Britney Spears. It was definitely heartbreak hotel. Yeah, I, I know that. Um, I, 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 this was the first relationship that I had where. 
we literally were like this like we we oh, live like we we lived together we should like we everything was like that was my man like, yeah it was we, heading towards a forever it was a forever like yeah. my apartment was his apartment his apartment was my apartment oh, we I had we, sh- we exchanged I love, keys I love, I love that y'all have your I'm, own apartment i, I just want to oh yeah we, we, we had our own apartment me, i don't think i want to live with a nigga for oh any time yeah soon, no ever. we had our own apartments but we i mean we had yeah we had separate apartments but we would we would okay we we, 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 we go into your house we go into your house like it was that and then um everything was just perfect like what i realized now he was just mimicking me because he was a narcissist mm-hmm. so but neither we, here, was saying, was saying, we, we have to get into that another time because yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could talk about narcissistic niggas all the time. yeah, all yeah. The, neither here nor there but yeah that i had to chop my hair i, I mean Eric, i couldn't even put it into a ponytail oh, it was shit. so short because yeah, I, I can't put this like, weave in ponytail i tried i'm done i'm yeah. done with everything yeah yeah so Last but not least, I don't know if you um, have seen around that there was a talk because I think it was Queen, Queen Nigel, the one I sent you. Well, she was replying to someone else. It was actually, I think it was The Real or something. It wasn't The Real. It started with somebody else. And yeah. I think it was somebody else that said it. And I don't even remember where it started, but the... But she replied to... But she was the, replying to yeah. So the conversation was really about, are you allowing your single friend to be in a household with you and your significant other? Mm-hmm. As like staying the night, like just if they come at, into town, like... Is that something you would do? Would you allow one of your single friends to be in a household with a you and your man? Uh, well, one, I was that person. So, uh, yes, because um, my close circle of friends, I know. And um, it it they're like sisters. Yeah. So I wouldn't I I, I would never think that think that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, granted, I know life happens. Things, it, nothing is out of the realm of impossible, right? Right. But I know the people that I have around me that would not, I wouldn't have people like that around me where I would have to question their loyalty. Yeah. Um, How do you feel? I think that? it's a little bit different for us normal people. Yeah. Um, I feel like celebrities is a little like yeah, more different. that yeah. they have to be more conscious of it. Uh, me, if like if it was one of my close friends, I wouldn't mind one of my close friends staying yeah. the yeah. night with me and my husband. If it's an acquaintance, honestly, I wouldn't have an acquaintance staying the night. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's just the, the people who I have around me, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. But I feel like for celebrities, it's a little bit different because the people they have around them, they're close to, they still might fuck them over. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like their their lives are just so much more fake, so faker than can ours. Can we put in perspective, though? Like, how many fucking Maury episodes have we watched? <laughs> and then this bitch is like, yeah, my best friend's up with my man. Yeah. Even fucking Kelly Price. She was a friend, friend of mine. mine and That's she true. With, so it's like, granted. You're friends with, with saying, your man. Just because it's not your reality is not like because I've I've know people and I mean I've fucked a guy's friend even though we weren't together but I'm saying like I I've done that so I'm like I I don't know I feel like I will allow someone because I've done it before fucking a guy's friend that you're not together with and fucking someone's husband or wife okay, I, I think yeah, those are I'm two different saying, levels I, I just feel yeah. like people fluctuate and they'll uh, that's what I'm saying yeah because like, you know I, two years ago I said I would never fuck a guy's friend. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah. I, I've had girls around me when I was in a relationship and sleep in my house, on my couch and all that good stuff. Would I still do it? I probably still will probably do it, but- I will do it. Yeah. I think I'm yeah. very mindful because I've had friends in the past year that made me- Question. Question their, their intentions, their motives. And it's like, it's not because I don't believe that people are not good people. It's just because I've seen and I've heard and I've witnessed and I'm like, Seen, heard you just gotta be very thing. mindful yeah, of who mindful you allow in your space. space. Again, when you have people that really show you who they are, believe them. You have to believe them because a lot of times we we bypass mm-hmm. these these red flags because oh that's my girl. Nah, yeah, she, would she would never. She would do that to that bitch, but she ain't gonna do that to me. <laughs> in the whole time. And the reality, she's she doing it to on you. you. Yeah, so it's just like it's character, right? Like it's a character thing. Like if. They'll do it to one person. And they, that's so funny. And I, I don't remember one of the friendships you. that I had and I kept trying to like, try to justify shit that she was doing. And you were like, no girl, she's a horrible person. Yeah. Like, 
I'm just like, other people that are not there, they will see it before you do. So yeah, yeah. I'm very big on like loyalty and friendship. Mm-hmm. So when I see anything weird going on, I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. But you know, if you choose to still be friends with this person, you're not trying to see it through. Yeah, I'm just like, I <laughs> don't try to see you through. You have uh, probably like one time for you to do something fishy no, you with do. me. You only have one t- chance with you. So that brings us to our topic of conversation. What is it like maintaining female friendships? At Not just ass- female, just adult friendships, adult period. Adult friendships in our grown-ass age. Yeah. Because it's really fucking actually hard. Yeah. Harder than I thought it would be. Because, you know, hard. you think when you're in high school or when you're in middle school, friendships are as easy as they are because you see someone every day. And, you know, you have a lot of shared time. But mm-hmm. the older you get, you just like, sometimes you're so... Um, caught up in your own fucking life that you don't yeah. have you don't make make time for the other people around you so um as we get older we find it difficult to maintain like as we as we've gotten older do you find it like it's more difficult to maintain your friendships yes and no uh yes because um i feel like there's so many people that i love and i care about and i want to like be around them but then no because I know my capacity right mm-hmm. now as an adult, like I only have a limited capacity to give. Right. And the more I've gotten to know myself, I realize that um, I give I give a lot of energy to people and I can't give it to everybody. Mm. And it's hard because sometimes I, I, I do like I, I want to I'm a, a giver I want to I want to be here for you I want to be here for you I right be here for you, but fuck like I got to be here for myself right like there as of recently I've literally had to tell people no I'm not going to that I don't want to do that I don't want to do that and and saying no is so hard sometimes it's saying no is very hard because for, especially for me, because it's like, I don't want to disappoint people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to make people feel sad. Do you like, consider yourself a natural please, uh, people, people pleaser? Yes, mm-hmm. I am. What's a pe- time? I'm a Virgo, but mm-hmm. my my rising and my moon is um, Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. So I got a lot of fire. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I got a lot of earth. Um, so it's it's it's, it's, say, it's a war. Definitely people pleasers. It's a war with myself sometimes because I definitely want to be there for people. But as I've gotten older, I have to be there for myself. And I know I'm a very spiritual energy type person. Right. If the energy ain't right, spirit ain't right in the room. Bitch, you're my soulmate. I can't be there. I can't be there. Like, I'm not going to. I will disappear. I'll show up. Just show face, right? Disappear in about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's just, but that just comes with time and just people that know me know I like to be invited, but don't expect me to show up. Okay, that is me. <laughs> oh my God, that is me. I love being invited, but I might not show up. Because one thing about Sam is she going to fall asleep and say, oh, I went to sleep. And we yeah. like, bitch, we know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find yeah. it difficult to maintain um, adult friendships? At, at I feel like it, it is difficult to maintain adult friendships because our friendship, like to me, to make time for your friends, it's appointment only. Yeah. Um, people have jobs. People have, you know, their own things going on. They have yeah. families, all kinds of things going on in their lives. So it's like, it's like, are you free Tuesday? No. Okay. Are you free next mm-hmm. Thursday? Like, it's a most even with podcasting. You'd be like, I'm like, what day did you work? Do you like, I'm like, yeah, like, yeah even, even that. To create contact, having friendship yeah. at this age is appointment yeah. only. So <laughs> I hate that. It is very, it is difficult, especially like when you want to keep the, like, maintain a close friendship it's like we have to understand that we're not gonna always have Have as much time for each other yeah but i'm gonna love you regardless of absolutely so my thing is do you find it the same high maintenance when it comes to male friendships no i i keep it across the board like i don't because that expectation can't be had out of me yeah so i can't expect it from people and i don't want that expectation out of me like I can only give when I'm able to give. Yeah. And and I've learned that again just through like just growing and I can't I can't do a lot of shit. Not anymore. I don't have that I don't have that energy. energy. Yeah. And and it's hard because it's just like, you know, I have friends in the industry that still party. They still go out. And you're like I'm not there I can't anymore. 
do that. Like, really? I cannot do that. Yeah, like, I'm starting to feel that club, way too. Going to a club, like a packed ass club, gives me anxiety. Like, yo, like being out, like, can a we get, cool. can I used to can love being to, outside. No, I listen, Monday through Monday, I was out. Outside? I was out. When I tell you, like, I used to work at Olive Garden, right? And I used to, so there's this place called the Roxy. It was the, it was, it was, okay, so Mondays, it was a spot. Tuesdays, it was the office. Wednesdays, it was uh, the Roxy. Thursday, it was in bar. Friday, I think it was Shadow Bar. Saturday, it was something else. Any of these Sundays, places. it was something else. I can't remember the, I can't remember exact, oh, Sundays was Belvedere. I remember when Belvedere. I remember, Belvedere. You, I remember that shit. When I tell you, I was out. Yeah. I was out. So before Prospect turned into Prospect, it was called Scott. I was working there at Scott's Peak. So we were out all, yeah. like, all of the time. Yeah. I feel like it's really hard when you're in the nightlife because yeah. like you because yesterday I got off at and, fucking eight o'clock. And don't be pretty. And don't you dare be and pretty. Don't you dare be pretty. Because no. They want you out. They yes. gonna buy your drinks. They gonna pay for Hello. parking. They Hello. gonna Uber you. Hello. They gonna do. They Hello. gonna do bottle service for you. Okay. Listen. We yeah. had somebody came in by himself yesterday and got a fucking bottle by himself. Yeah. So yeah. I feel that. I, I definitely feel uh, maintaining male friendships are way easier. Um, I have a male best friend, and I feel like he's so fucking low maintenance. Yeah. He don't require much. He don't require anything at all, actually, from me. He actually is perfect for me because he like he does everything <laughs> i need him to do as a male friend so yeah i feel like maintaining my female friendships is way more harder than maintaining my male friendships yeah what about you yeah definitely i'm gonna say i only really have slim to a few guy friends and the ones that i do have i love them greatly actually i'm more high maintenance with them because i talk to them i talk to my male friends daily and i can go two or three days without mm -hmm. talking to my mm -hmm. girlfriends mm -hmm. i don't know why this book i feel safer talking to my male friends because I'm just like they don't care they don't care yeah. <laughs> they don't judge me they don't yeah. nothing I can literally be like yeah I did that, that, that he was like well I love that for you I was like yeah. perfect yeah yeah because yeah. I feel like with women we're always like kind of sometimes even with our friendships even if it went a while we're like trying to tiptoe our reputation with them yeah like you just don't want to look a certain way yeah, yeah so, with your female friends yeah and with a man I'm like I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a hoe yeah baby yeah. let's go so <laughs> So, what makes friendships with females so fragile? Ego. Mm. It's ego. Hello, yeah, yeah. Hello. Say that again. It's, it's ego. ego. So when so this is what I've come to realize. Like when you you when you are truly yourself, mm -hmm. like you are just yourself, and you and you stand in your glory and all that you are, right? And you have a friend that doesn't know who they are. And it's not there yet. And it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. That causes conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have I am myself. I can't be outside of anything other than me. And I've had conflict with females. Now that I realize, oh, you just don't know yourself yet. Right. You're not there yet. And that's cool. And you're but trying to project. we're just not going to be at that level. But that's what it is. It's like yeah. a competition because they want to outshine you. Mm. They want to outdo you. They want to be better than you. They want to, um, even though like you're you're living your life as free as a bird. I've had friends where I I mean they're married with children. They have a husband. And they have this and that. Here. And you're harpooning me. Mm. Like my nigga, I don't have anything that you have. Right. I, don't have anything I mean, I have. I, I, aren't y'all the dream? And, and, isn't and, that the isn't dream? Isn't this your dream? Right. Hello. But but you're you're making these jabs and these subs at me, it's and really you're saying the these little yeah. like low blow things at me. Like my nigga, I don't have to ask permission from nobody. I don't yeah. have to baby. I don't have to put my kids with babysitters. I don't have to do none of that. I can go. I am free as a bird. You currently don't have any kids right now. No, I don't have any children. Do you want any kids? Eventually, but yeah. I mean, like I love it, that for you. It, I love like, seeing that though. I, I that don't. Just I don't okay. want anything that's not. For you are me. my spirit animal because you are me. <laughs> like I'm just like you know what? If it happens, it happens. If it don't, if it, it doesn't. Don't. It doesn't. Yeah. Like, I hate when people try to say, "Oh, well, you're thirty something, and you know you need that. no." But yeah. I think that's, a, that's a problem. People always try to put an age on it, and that's yeah. what gives us the anxiety that it gives us. Now, yeah. So why do you feel like women's? I feel like it's like our. I feel like sometimes with women, our friendship are on eggshells. It's like mm -hmm. we can easily go from being best friends to not friends. That's very 
very quick. And it's very quickly. Like, guys can, can fight each other and still be friends. Facts. Us, we, if we get in a fight, we, we, we are we, no longer friends. Done. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's, I feel like I want to say it's our emotions. Like, I feel like that's the only thing that we have more of than, than males. It's just like, we're just yeah. more sensitive. So, we our feelings get hurt easier. We just take everything more personally personally and it's like our friendships are super fragile like yeah. we can stop being friends so easily and never talk to each other and that's but it is that really a friendship though that's what i was gonna get into I yeah said, i feel like the reason why women's friendships are very um fragile is because they're superficial yeah I yeah think that, they're superficial because i know there was a point in my life i wouldn't be your friend if i didn't think you were cute and I feel like I was like, I was just really going to be with the aesthetics mm-hmm. and like whatever. Mm-hmm. And now the older that I'm getting, I'm understanding that I'm like, I need so much more substance of a friend mm-hmm. than someone that looks good and that we take pictures together and we have fun together. Like having fun together is so great. But if we literally can't, I can't sit there and call you when I'm fucked up. Yeah. If you can't notice when I'm having a really off Bad day, day. Mm-hmm. like I feel like those are very important things to me in a friendship. And if I don't get those things, it's like, we have a very superficial friendship. It's like I have it's a very question. Basic. Do you notice when your friends are having an off day? Absolutely. You do? Absolutely. Okay. Because today, when I te- called you, and then when you, how you texted me, I was like, okay. And then when you got on the phone, I was like, I was like, are you okay? Okay. You know, like, I, I'm sick. Yeah. I'm this. Okay. I'm sick because I, I, I'm very like particular. Even with niggas that I'm dating, I'm like, oh my god, he watches my story. He doesn't watch my stories, so he's <laughs> he's watching for something. Like I, like, I look at everything. So yeah. even in text message. If you start using more punctuation that you yeah. use, yeah. I'm like, oh, this bitch going through it. What's up? What we doing? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Um, so it? how do you know when you've outgrown a friendship, and how do you go about that when it happens? I think you know when, like, you literally have, like, y'all's conversations have nothing in common. Yeah, have no I, substance. I, I, and you were I, saying that earlier. I, I, um, I'm going through that. Like, there's, I mean, these girls I've grown up with, I have went to high school with, and not to say that they're bad people, they're not. But where I'm at in my life is not where they're at in their yeah. lives and i love them absolutely adore them i would do anything for them but i can't i know that their perception of me is that 15 16 year old girl yeah that they they don't see me that's as an fact. adult that's, that's you know fact. what i mean like sometimes like when you have long-term friends they don't see you as the adult that you are they only see you as that person that they met so it's never like that so it's like you start noticing the phone calls the the conversations are very short or it's just like i don't want to talk about this shit like i don't like i don't want to talk to you about this yeah so but it's just like you got to give people you grace everything is grace like you got to give people grace like we're it doesn't matter if we grow apart i still love you but i'm just on another level and you're not on the level that I'm on. And that's okay. Yeah. You see, I had a friend that I kept giving grace to. Mm-hmm. I kept noticing the stuff she was doing and how she kept fucking up. And I've known this person since high school. We've mm-hmm. been very good friends for a very long time. And it, it was very, I'm a very like ride or die mm-hmm. like friend. I kept seeing her doing fucked up shit. I've seen her and friendships with other people and I'm just still I'm sticking beside her, mm-hmm. like still trying to be her mm-hmm. friend. And it's like, I feel like I've, I've, I've grown this friend. I've outgrown this friendship, mm-hmm. and it was it was very difficult for difficult for me to let this friendship go because I love her dearly, mm-hmm. and most friendships are not very hard for me to let go. Yeah, but this person in particular, I'm just like, damn, I love the fuck out of you, and it's I've outgrown you, but it's still like I don't want to lose that lose relationship. that relationship. So it's 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 very difficult, like to understand that even though I care about you and I love you, mm-hmm. this friendship no longer serves me. So if it no longer first. serves you, you gotta pick you first, girl. You gotta put me first, Lucia. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. How did yes. that video resurface? That show's been done for years. Right. Yeah, you gotta pick you first. Really? I'm gonna say I think for me, um, when I outgrow a friendship, it's like I mentally already know before it mm-hmm. actually happens, but I'm in denial because I am one of those people that I feel like I'm extremely friendly. Like yeah. Sammy always tells me, you like, that's the problem. You're just too friendly. But I'm like, 
What's the problem with me wanting to give all my love and energy to the world? Cause I feel like you can only get, give back, get back what you give out. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I'm like, I am super friendly. That is my biggest crutch. But with having that, I'm like, I think I form enough genuine connections that it's like, Ooh, like, how is this happening to me? Cause I'm like, I feel like I should peep this. Should I not know this? Cause I'm like, like I said earlier, I'm like, I know when my friends are like doing dumb shit. Like every time I'm, cause I have a very specific person that was my friend that every time we get into it, I would tell Sammy, she's like, that's not your friend. That's not your friend. And I'm like, I've been mentally like saying, okay, we're probably not gonna be friends. We're not gonna be friends. And now that we're not friends, it's like, I feel a sense of peace, but I still feel a, a sense of sadness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not even because of the love or what's, it's just because I feel like I give so, I do, I give a lot to, of me mm-hmm. to people mm-hmm. I, all the time mm-hmm. because I'm just an energy driven person. Mm-hmm. So maybe with age it will get better, but like now it's like, damn, I give a piece of you to me. No, it's not even about age. It's just about awareness. Awareness happens whenever you're ready to be aware of yeah. it. Yeah. And trust me, so I'm, it's I'm not always, about, I'm it's not about, it, but, but it's, it's just, not about it age. Yeah. It, but, it's um okay, so it's like a decision. All right. Yeah, you you gotta give to people that deserve it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and it's not about like, yeah, you be that, stay that way. But Only you to have to filter out people who deserve it because I was exactly that same way. Giving, giving, giving to motherfuckers that did not deserve my loyalty that did not deserve my grace did not deserve anything from me other than being cussed the fuck out right but i i i because in my mind i gotta be a good person and i gotta keep my blood i gotta be mindful of what our energy i'm putting out there nah fuck that you listen if i am taking the short end of the stick yeah, I don't want Fuck it. that. No, yeah, I agree no. with that because people who aren't close to me probably don't think I'm a good friend. But people who are close to me know no, I'm a, yeah, I'm a exactly. good friend because I'm very selective on who I give my love to because I know my love is strong and I know my loyalty and my Listen, bond is very strong. My friends know. They call me tonight and say, hey, we ride got dawn. a problem. Bitch, best, we ride at dawn. We my best friend dawn. called me and said, hey, um, my husband has to work. I need some help with my kids. I know it's like I got, but I need you here by like 630 in the morning. That means that I have to leave Houston at three o'clock in the morning. Guess where the fuck I was at three o'clock in the morning on the road. Yeah. But I know that she would do the same for me. Yeah. So it's just like, I ain't getting up. Nah, I ain't doing that for everybody. Right. But it's just like, you got to know who you got to give that to. I feel that. So, have you ever lost a friendship that you wanted back? No. Same. No. I, I mean, I have, and I, I got the friend back. It yeah. Was Samira. I fucking love okay, her. Okay, you know what? I take that back, but it was a male. Yeah, I just feel like, I just feel like the reason why I, lo- I lost her when you were saying earlier, you're like, why are they so fragile? It's because of pride. I lost her because of my pride, not because mm-hmm. of her. Mm-hmm. And she said I triggered her in a way that, mm. like, she just couldn't deal with at the time because she was dealing with so much shit. So, yeah, I've, I've definitely had a friend that I lost and I wanted back. And, Got her back. I love. I you. have not lost a friend that I wanted back. I again, I take it back. It was a male, <laughs> uh, but it was like this weird thing, and we had to go through our little tiff. Mm-hmm. But I ended up saying, "Let me calm down. Let me just give it some perspective on it, and let me see if he's grown." My question is: Do you sometimes feel like separation of a friendship? allows y'all both to be a better person that y'all can come back together and be friends. Cause I'm like, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna say, even though you say you guys, you don't have any friends that you want back. What if the person that you don't want to be friends with anymore comes back as a new healed person? Because like when me and Samira, if Natalie about- comes back as a new healed person, then I will definitely <laughs> take her back. Yeah, I know. Oh no! I don't Bing know. bong, baby. Yeah. Okay, she's on her <laughs> fucking chest. Yeah. Oh, okay, we don't Bing say bong. names. Bing I mean, I bong, said Samira because we're friends now. But yeah, if Natalie comes back as a new healed person and better, I would take her back as a friend because I love that girl from her toes to her feet. Like that's what my about bitch. me? You like my toes to my feet? No. <laughs> She ain't gonna take me back. <laughs> but yeah, if, if it if it was to get better, then I would take her back. But other than that, no, I need her to figure her shit out. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's because it's only draining you in the end. It is, So, 
uh, how do you personally maintain adult friendships? Because we keep talking about like, you know, losing them. Yeah. How do we maintain them? Um, I try to text. <laughs> uh, I send yeah. memes. memes. I, I feel like any That's kind meme. of contact is how me. we maintain them. I send them. memes. Um, Sam used to hate or, memes. Sam used to hate or them. Or I like to like, uh, if I'm watching I'm something on person. TV. But you became one. No, I'm still not a meme person. Yes, you are. You follow meme pages now. No, Before I don't. you never did. What memes meme pages great. do I follow? Memes are so great. I'm going to find out, bitch. I'm I don't follow, follow any meme pages. But how you send me meme pages? How you send me memes if you don't follow any meme pages? Because I come across them from other people posting them. I'm like, oh, this is you. I don't follow any meme pages. I do. I do. Yeah, no, I follow like eighty meme pages. I'm not a meme the memes person. Memes are great. Um, or like I'll take a picture. Or like with Ebony, so we had this joke on our last podcast where we were talking about Johnny Taylor and that song "Meet Me at the Casino," and he said, "I got a dollar for the bus fare." And one for the jukebox. And I came across this meme and had a, a dollar that said jukebox and a dollar that said bus fare. And I sent it to her. I said, meet me at the casino. <laughs> but so, I mean, so only funny. y'all get that because I'm not lying. Yeah. No, okay. But I'm just saying, it was funny as fuck. But anyways. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like shit like that. Like memes. Um, Sometimes, you know, I'll call. Or I send like, food I'll call, pages. I'll call. Food pages, yeah. or I'll call multiple times. I like to do that. Like yeah. I like to call like I'm on Facebook. I do that same. I, do the same I like thing. to call on Facebook, Instagram. If you don't answer my phone call, like on like regular phone, like I'll call you like on these weird apps. Yeah. No, <laughs> bitch, are you checking out blocks? <laughs> How do you maintain adult friendships at this grown up age? Uh, pretty much the same thing. I try to keep up with my friends. You know, I check on them, see how they're doing, keep talk to them regularly if I can. Um, send memes, you know, all of my friends were on a group chat, you know, I have multiple group chats, so that's how we keep I'm in touch with each other. Crazy. I'm in three different group chats. So these <laughs> adults that I don't talk to, I won't talk to personally. We maintain our friendship through the group through chat. The group chats, yeah. So yeah. that's how I keep, I, I'm, I'm a friends. I'm a, I have, I think I have a lot of friends Yeah, you yeah. Do. and I don't have a lot of like very close friends. But, but you have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. Yeah. I, I'm I'm a I'm a woman's woman. So yeah. it's like I, I love having all these women friendships yeah. and that's how I maintain them by keeping up with uh, group chats, Instagram, all those things. Like Instagram is so easy to keep up with friendships. Oh, like Facebook. I don't really do Facebook like that. I but, barely do Facebook. I post a meme yeah. or two and that's it. <laughs> um for me, I just think I'm just very consistent. I'm like, I'm gonna call you. I'm a face. I'm not you. very consistent. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pretty consistent because I know how I would feel if I was on the other end. And I just feel like sometimes you just want someone to check up on you. Sometimes you just want that like little nudge of like, hey, I know we might have not talked in three days, but I'm still thinking of you. So anyone that's in my circle chances are and it's even crazier to me because i'm like most times i'll call most of my close friends and or people that like i find myself being in alignment with in proximity i call them at least once a day give or take usually if not it's probably every other day or it's like i'm communicating with you in a way that i know we're speaking for at least an extensive amount of time so you know i want to know yeah. how your day actually was yeah right I, I hope i do that enough if i don't do it right y'all please let me know because sometimes play no, but up. you know what there's no right way to do it i know there's what i'm no saying right but what if you think you're doing something and people are like you're not doing it so i just right. like if i need help doing it y'all just let me know because it's not even how, hear what me. you do it's how they receive it because if they don't receive it in the way they feel loved yeah. it doesn't yeah. even matter exactly yeah. so i can check on someone every single fucking day and, they, and just because i'm not asking them the right questions they won't think that i'm checking them yeah. they'll think i'm just being nosy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See ya. So me and Amir were talking about height maintenance friends and what do you consider high a height? High and low. Well, well first high, then yeah. low. So what do you consider a height maintenance friend? A height? High. high. A high friend? Like a high, high maintenance. maintenance friend. Ooh, a seat. Look, <laughs> don't ask me my opinion on shit if you ain't finna take it. Uh, high maintenance friends, they have, they want my opinion on everything. I yeah. can't give you that energy. Um, high maintenance friend, uh, somebody that just is constantly calling me, asking me for something. Yes. Wants me to, to give them advice, wants me to look at their outfit. Oh my God. Uh, yes. Wants me to see, <laughs> do you like this hair like color? Uh, these earrings, do you, socks. 
Yes. Please don't fucking call me for that. <laughs> I'm the wrong friend because I'm gonna tell you yes, and then yes, yes, I'm gonna yes. be like, hey, 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 I gotta, I, I gotta, I, I gotta open the front door. I gotta call you back. <laughs> I can't take that. I don't like that. I don't like neediness. Yeah. High maintenance. I can't do that. No. Yeah, so I consider a high maintenance friend. Pretty much what she said. Someone who's always one like, hey, how's my outfit like? Um, always calling, always want you around them, always want you to hang. Like I have a friend, like if I can't hang out with her, she's upset, you know, can't do it. So it's just like, you know, every, they're, they're always needing something. I, I am very tolerant of my height name, height minus friends. It just takes a lot of energy. No, can't it's, do it. it's just like, ugh, girl, like I don't really want to be on the phone with you the whole time while I, you're choosing out your outfit. Chatty patties. They wanted to chat about yeah, something. Every little thing. 30 minutes is a stretch. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Definitely. Yeah, I definitely feel like a high maintenance friend is someone that always needs constant attention and reassurance. Constant, yes. Like, yes. Those are the two things attention and reassurance. Yeah. Because they want to make sure that your opinion, because op- your opinion valued to them. So they want to make sure that you always are approving of it before they do it. And I'm like, bro, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. You don't wear need, it. You wear don't the shirt. Need my but sometimes <laughs> you want to call your friend like, does this look good? You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if there's you're constantly calling me to make sure you're this looks good. Everything. Yeah. I'm going like, to say, baby, I need you some, I need some, I need you to get some direction. Please. Yeah. If it's for everything, that gets annoying. Yeah. So what do you consider a low maintenance friend? Somebody like me. It, you know that, that didn't give us any context you at all just, you know i'm like a cactus right like you just <laughs> you put me by the window <laughs> don't got water me that much. <laughs> yeah let me just do my thing with open the window up let the sun shine in while i can just kind of stick my shit out like you know i'm like a cactus easy peasy yeah um so you know i don't call you too much. i mean i'm gonna call you for your opinion if, if, if i trust you yeah See, there's, there's got to be a level of trust right like I trust you with something or if I trust you with your if I trust your opinion on something I'm never going to ask you what I'm going to wear or any of that cause I don't do that but as far as like like relationships and stuff like that like I do get a second opinion because I know I'm a bad sh- I, I can be bad shit crazy so I, yeah. need, I need some type of like grounding yeah grounding. so I do have people that I can call to bring me down but like I, you know I'm very low maintenance like just Call me when you need me or like, you know, call me when it's like not super serious. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not trying to ride out on people. I don't do that anymore. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. To me, a little man's friend is someone you don't have to talk to every day. Yes. Um, they understand that y'all you're busy and you have your own life. And when y'all do talk, it's back like. Yeah, like y'all ha- is like just how y'all left off. Yeah, you know, someone who is understanding, someone who wants to hang out with you when you can hang out. It's not forcing hangouts, not making you feel bad for not hanging out. Absolutely. Um, all like you know, all those things. I consider myself a low maintenance friend. Um, I don't really require a lot. I don't need you to talk to me every day. Um, I if we do talk, that's cool. If we don't talk, that's cool too. So I I'm very chill. Yeah, for me, I think most of my low maintenance friends tend to be people that are usually either in relationships or have a family. So for me, it's like they just are not offended about anything. They're just like, you know, I get it because I'm busy. Yeah, we're all adults here. And I think for me, I think it's situational. I think I'm um, a I could be either or depending on what it is, because I said sometimes by proximity, I'm a high maintenance friend. But sometimes I understand that, like, you know. I have those friends that I'm like, I can't be high maintenance with because they're not going to give me what I need them to give me. And I'm just letting myself down trying to yeah. say, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you this? Why didn't you that? So I feel like I feel like I fluctuate because I can't say I'm only high maintenance. I'm only low maintenance because it depends on the friendship, because there was a time where me and Sammy, we were high maintenance and now we're low maintenance. We're like, hey, how are you? How's your <laughs> life? You know, da, da, yeah. da, da, you know, like, no, because because I said what made us high maintenance because we have proximity. We okay. work together like we would go to work together. We, we would drive sometimes together. Like we would go on our little fake breaks together when we was bartending and shit. Like yeah. we would do so much shit together and we podcasted together. Yeah. yeah. So was, like, we yeah. were seeing each other a oh, lot. A lot. It was high sensory. Yeah. So now that we're like, we like, we'll probably talk maybe three times this, like out of a week. Like well, for me, I just feel like proximity makes it easy. Well, it makes it high maintenance because you just have so much access to them. Absolutely. If you don't have access to someone that much, you don't get too discouraged or upset about not seeing right. them or hanging out with them. Cause you're like, you're, right. t- you're more you understanding because you know that you're not a main focus in their life. Right. 
So earlier when we were talking about this, we found out that there are four types of friendships that you would have in your life. You have an acquaintance, a peer friend, a close friend, and a best friend. So in the stages of being in a acquaintance, the manability, can't even get that out. If you can manage that motherfucker, it's unlimited. What you disclose is usually just facts and the level of trust that's needed to have that relationship is usually little to none. And then for a peer friend, you usually have many of those. And what you disclose is usually only opinions and the trust that you have with them is some. So a peer friend, would that be like your party friend? I think so. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I, I would consider that. A coworker. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. see, I don't, my coworkers are not my friends. I feel like I make that very clear that I, I don't like my coworker that was your friend though. So it's very I mean, easy. You, it's, you it's, just it's, happen to make it. <laughs> I feel like when, especially in bartending, like you will gra- gravitate towards people yeah. that like you would be cool with. Yeah. Because I've, I've, the reason why I say my coworkers are not my friend because when we stop working, we stop talking to each other. Yeah. So if we were really friends, even us not working yeah. together, it's, we will still yeah. talk. So like, yeah, we're coworkers and we're cool, but outside of that, we don't hang out, we don't talk, we don't, you know, it's whatever. So we're, you're not actually my friend. Uh, so we have our close friend. Um, it's a small number of people. Usually what y'all this close are like goals, um, weaknesses. Y'all talk about personal stuff with your close friends and um, the level of trust is like a lot with a close friend. After that, it's a best friend. Um, it's usually very few people. Some people feel like they can, they can only have one best friend. Some people have multiple best friends. And um, y'all talk about your dreams or very in, in, intimate details. And that is the highest level of trust is yeah. with your best friend. So do you feel like you can have multi- more than one best friend? Absolutely. Or? I have multiple best friends. Um, yeah. Each of them play their own separate part. Um, there is one that when I'm feeling spiritually low, I go to her. She's a preacher's kid. She She knows how to lift me up. She absolutely, and I'm honest and open with her. There's another person where I can just, I don't talk religion or I don't talk spirituality with her, but you know, I, I, I tell her life's lows with, you know, whatever. It's, it's fine. Um, I think that there's, it's almost like, it's like, uh, you have these people that you can, everybody's different everybody plays a different part i think yeah in your network everybody plays a different part in your life and that's okay yeah um i think everybody can be something to you if you allow them to be and you don't necessarily have to have one best friend because i thought that moving here but the person that i thought was my best i can't tell her certain things i can't i can't be as honest as i am with her as so I does am. that make her your best friend then if you can't be absolutely honest? But but then again it is because she can't she is my best friend because we've 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 experienced a whole lot of life together mm-hmm. that nobody can take that away from us. But as I've gotten older, there's just certain things that, you know, I feel more comfortable because I know how she is at this age, at this stage in her life. There's this, I feel more comfortable with telling this person this. Yeah. That doesn't take away from her being my best friend. I know that I can depend on her. If I, if I'm homeless, she's going to house me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Like her children love me. Everybody, you know what I mean? Her family loves me. Like it's just levels. Right. Right. I just think that the, the word best friend is, can't be like, reserved for just one person or three people like it's it's to whoever is in your life that is giving you what you need right like if you need a hug this person is a hugger they're gonna give you up like you know what i mean yeah. like, or if this person is gonna speak life into you and you can only tell this person this like that's that person that's so you know best friends is really broad it's broad yeah okay How is it maintaining a friendship with someone you do a podcast with? It's good and it's bad, right? Yeah. Me and Ebony didn't have a friendship prior to our podcast. Like, we connected basically um, through mutual friends, through bartending. And it's not been without its ebbs and flows. 
But I genuinely yeah. care about Ebony, and I know Ebony cares about me, but it's just like, um, and I think that's what makes it work, is that we didn't grow up together. Our backgrounds are completely different. And um, we just come from two separate sides of the track, right? But it works. But it also is just like me giving her grace and her giving me grace. Yeah. Because we are two different people um, that are still figuring each other out. And, you know, our stories, because some of the stories that she's like, bitch, you did what? Or and, and then, you know, same flip side, she'll be like, bitch. <laughs> yeah. So um, even with that, it's just because we we're, we're still like we're about to be five years into this shit, and it's like that's beautiful. Uh, it's just acceptance. Like I mean, it, everything is just acceptance. Like right, like you got to accept people for where they are, what they are, and how where they, they are in their life. And I'm one of those people that. I see it. I get it. I'm not trying to change nobody. I don't care. Like, I'm on my own path. And I genuinely love Ebony. So, like, there's nothing that she could do to me that would make me, I mean, unless she tried to, like, physically fight me or something. Yeah. Like, that. like that's the only thing that stops female friendship is fight. We can't like, fight I'm and be not friends. Gonna fight, but, like, I, I don't, I've never been in a fight. I've never had to be in a fight. And not to say that I can't fight, but I just never had to be in a fight with my, I've never fought my friends. I've never verbally, you know, any of that. Yeah. And, um, but that would be like the only thing that would be like a deal breaker for me is like, fight. I don't fight. Like, yeah. No. So my question is, what is a healthy amount of time to be considered to be calling someone your friend? I mean, there is, a, like I said before, there is no rule book to life. Thank you, because that's how I felt too. There is no rule book to I life. Literally I mean, I can, connect, like I can connect with somebody and that instant connection can be a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can um, be friends with somebody for a lifetime and it's literally like never, <laughs> like you don't even know who I am. Yeah. Like literally so, in a drop of time. Like, there is no rule to anything. I think it's energy. Like if you feel that that person is energetically good for you and that you're that you're good for that person, then there you y'all it's just like fucking, right? Hmm. You can fuck a nigga. And I'll fuck him today. And, and, today and love him and, tomorrow. And, and be in a relationship for two years. Right. That's true. Or you can fuck a nigga today. And I talk to him tomorrow. <laughs> again. Yeah. So you just, it's, again, it's just like, it's just one of those things where it's just like, you, you take a chance and you do what you got to do. But I mean, hey, there's no rule book. Okay. Uh, my last question is, do you trust women who say, most of my friends are guys. I don't just trust women friends. No, I don't. Trust yeah. Them. I don't trust women like that. I, I don't. As you shouldn't. As you shouldn't. I, I don't trust women who can't maintain female friendships. I feel like, we, like we always say we're a woman's woman. So any woman that has not maintained a friendship longer than five years to me is questionable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I have friends that I've been friends with since I was in high school. So, yeah, I have two brothers and I always tell my brothers Look at her friends and look at her friendships and see how she maintains relationships. Yeah. Because that's going to be your base of how she's going to maintain a relationship with you. Because if she doesn't have females and my brother, my older brother has dated a girl that, I mean, she was jumping from best friend to best friend, best friend, best friend. Yikes. And, and we don't know, well, where did you go to high school? Did you go to high school with this? Like, it was just all, everybody was new. Everybody yeah. was a year in. Like, what? Why don't you have any long-term friends? Why don't, you, why don't you have any Great. more? <laughs> I, no, I have long-term friends, but I am a person that does genuinely have a lot of friendships. I do, too. But but you have friends that I you do. can say. I, I got some, okay, like, so you have, five, six so, years so, in so, Okay, but, What's I up? Mean, but all I'm saying is, you have a history, you have a track record of maintaining a relationship yeah. that's longer than two years. Right. And to me, if you can maintain a relationship longer than two years, then I, 
Like, that's what I look for in a nigga. Like, where are your homeboys at? Right. How long you been friends with your friends? Whatever, look like. Because <laughs> if you ain't been friends with your friends for a long time, I don't know if I can fuck with you because really? you don't know how to handle relationships. Exactly. And it's not even just, like, <clears throat> male or female. It's like, it, relationships are male-male, female You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it doesn't have to be sexual. Facts. It's just, like, you don't know how to problem solve. You don't know how to, like... You know, everybody's going to get into it at some point. You know, somebody's going to fight. Somebody's going to disagree about something. But if we don't know how to problem solve, where, how do you, how can we re- remain in a relationship? Yeah, it's a fact. So. But thank you for taking this journey with us. Um, we're talking about maintaining female friendship, maintaining adult friendship, how we are maintaining our friendships, what it takes to keep a fucking friendship out of this grown ass age we have. If you haven't already, follow us at the real sip and spill everything except Twitter. It is sip and spill one. And where can they find you one more time? Uh, I am Adriana Cool and the Recovering Party Girls Pod on Twitter, and then Recovering Party Girls on Instagram. All right, so go ahead and follow her and give us a five-star rating because we're some five-star bitches. bitches. Ow. Ow.